Welcome to Africa channel. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to help us. Don't underestimate this new off-road SUV when facing snow, mud, and slippery rocks, or if you just want a flex dot as the new vehicle manufacturing arm of the petrochemical company founded by British billionaire Jim Ratcliffe, Ineos Automotive has everything to prove. The Grenadier is the brand's first-ever consumer product and wears a design that evokes off-road stalwarts. Its round headlights, boxy body, and flat fenders recall the original Land Rover Defender and the Mercedes-Benz G-Wagon, indicating the Grenadier should boast comparable performance to those spiritual predecessors. After a long lead-up with multiple previews and a prototype drive, we finally put the production version of the 2024 Ineos Grenadier through its paces to see if the new SUV is ready to compete with some of the industry's most beloved nameplates. We traveled to Frigid Inverness, Scotland, to sample the Grenadier and the types of environments it was designed to conquer. To begin our journey through the Highlands, Ineos first got us situated in a UK spec Grenadier Trialmaster powered by a 246 horsepower BMW B57 3.0 litre twin turbo diesel. The oil burning Ineos and its 406 pounds to foot of torque won't come to the US, but the off road focused Trialmaster trim will be a standard offering in this market. It includes appropriate features such as front and rear differential locks, underside protection, and a raised air intake. Rolling on 17-inch steel wheels and wearing stylish magic mushroom tan gray paint, our test rig certainly looked every bit the off-roader Ineos said it would be dot as our caravan rolled across the Scottish countryside. We appreciated the Grenadier's superbly comfortable Recaro seats, which are standard with the Trialmaster version. We later discovered these chairs boast great lateral support for both road trips and uneven trails. The interior feels upscale with its high-quality leathers and metals, but it stops short of the G-Wagon's opulence. This interior puts function above all else while providing a more ergonomic space than the likes of a Jeep Wrangler. The cabin is well insulated from exterior noise, even when riding on all-terrain tires, and even with available safari ceiling windows. We did note the defroster struggled to defog the sides of the windshield and side windows, which frustrated us as we trudged through poor road conditions. Ride quality, on the other hand, is excellent. Even though the Ineos Grenadier is a traditional body-on-frame SUV with solid axles, its five-link coilover setup at all four corners provides great body control and suspension damping. Ineos stressed the fact it skipped over an air ride setup in the hopes of achieving long-term reliability, and in doing so we bet it saved on development cost, too. Ineos then let us explore the Grenadier's low traction abilities on a decommissioned golf course. The previous evening's precipitation created an icy, snowy, and muddy route with varying grip levels. We engage the vehicle's off-road mode, which disables the parking sensors and cameras via a button located within the overhead control panel. Because this setting disables features that render the Grenadier illegal for street use, activating it requires a one-second button hold followed by a second button push for confirmation. Approaching a large slope, we use the hill descent control to manage the Grenadier's weight down a grade of about 25 degrees. The surface was covered in ice and mud, but at a set speed of 3 miles per hour, the off-road SUV shuttled itself down with no braking inputs necessary. All we had to do was hold the wheel straight. Compared to other hill descent systems we've experienced, the Ineos managed a remarkably drama-free execution with almost no jostling, jolting, or jerking on the way down. We wrapped up our first day in the Grenadier with more trail driving, trekking through narrows alongside Scotland's stunning locks. At low speeds, the gutsy 3.0-liter twin-turbo inline-6 BMW engine takes a back seat to enjoying the scenery. Under hard acceleration, however, it exhibits a growling character and effortlessly pulled our rig up to highway speeds. As darkness arrived, we found the Ineos Grenadier's standard LED headlights leave much to be desired. To see a reasonable distance ahead, we toggled the high beams manually, as Ineos doesn't offer an auto-dimming feature. We didn't know until later that we could have fired up the much brighter set of auxiliary lights, which would have been a big help. For the hardcore off-roader or the rodeo drive shopper, the 2024 Ineos Grenadier has the right stuff to flex on the trail or street. Its pricing seems to be where it needs to be, too. Ineos indicated both the Trialmaster and Fieldmaster trims will start around $70,000. That places the Grenadier just above the Land Rover Defender lineup and well short of the Mercedes-Benz G550. Ineos now needs to work out the kinks we observed before the Grenadier comes to the US. The UK market versions we drove only had parking sensors and a backup camera, whereas competing off-road SUVs have full suites of active safety tech. Ineos promised the US version will also receive features required for federalization, including automatic emergency braking, lane keep assist, and drowsy driver detection. 
we'd also like to see a native navigation system, lockers that are easier to disable, and better windshield defrosters. Regardless, after two days exploring Scotland, we believe the company shouldn't be underestimated. The 2024 Ineos Grenadiers retro looks and modern performance are a tantalizing proposition for overlanding enthusiasts and car collectors alike. We have come to the end of the video. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our channel to help us.